speaking on the subject supernatural speed part five and that is titled a fighting spirit a fighting spirit a fighting spirit a fighting spirit we are here to understand the relationship between a fighting spirit and supernatural speed. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, David was sent to go and look after his brethren in the battlefield where Israel was confronted with Goliath. And in 1 Samuel 17 verse 22, the Bible said, David left the carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army. He didn't walk. He ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. Go ahead. Let me read on. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and we were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that when the man who killeth, that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches. And will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man or for the man that killeth this Philistine? And take it away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should die the armies of the living God? The Lord bless his word. That was a fighter spirit that came and saw fight. And he instantly got excited because he came with the spirit of a fighter. In verse 48 of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 48, the Bible said, And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. He ran. With the spirit of a fighter, you don't walk, you run. Supernatural speed is inevitable with the spirit of a fighter. But as we proceed this morning, two things are very important to note by way of introduction. Things we have heard before. First, that life is a battlefield. A battlefield. Not a playground. Not form fair. Life is a battlefield. Not a playground. Not for form fair. That was why the Bible said in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. All the way to verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6. He said finally my brethren. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. That he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers. The rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. We therefore take unto you the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. You see, we wrestle, we wrestle, we wrestle. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 6, he said, Though we war in the flesh, so, sorry, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of struggle, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought. To the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. When your obedience is fulfilled. 
life is a battlefield, not a playground. Number two, it takes a fighting spirit to make the most of life. It takes a fighting spirit to experience, to make the most of life and experience speed in life. It takes a fighting spirit. It takes it. Until there is a fighting spirit, you can't make the most of this life. Until there is a fighting spirit, you can't experience speed in life. Paul the Apostle said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and in verse 6, he said, For I am now ready. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That is, I have enjoyed my life. Henceforth there is laid for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me at that day. I have enjoyed my life. It takes a fighter spirit, a fighting spirit, to make the most of life and enjoy speed in life. Now, do we have examples of people who fought in Scripture? And who made the most of their lives? Yes. Example number one, David. In Psalm 89, verse 19. The Bible said, Then thou spakest in a vision to, to thy holy one, and sayest, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. That word mighty is the word gibor, is the word valor, is the word fighter. Is the word fighter. David. Brutal. Aggressive. Ferocious fighter. Look at what David said. In Psalm 60. Verse 12. He said. Alright Psalm. 18 verse 31. Psalm 18 verse 31 to 32. For who is God save the Lord. Or who is a rock, save our God. It is God that guarded me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hind's feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my hand. Brutal fighter David was. Fought 66 battles according to record. And lost not one. He overtook everybody in front of him. And everybody that was his contemporary. He lived maximally. He fulfilled destiny abundantly. Like we saw in the course of this week. He was almost everything. Worshipper. Singer. Songwriter. Warrior. Giant killer. People developer. Military general. Priest. Prophet. King. One lifetime. By the spirit of the fighter. David was a fighter. Number two, Elijah. Elijah was a perennial fighter. In 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1, when he arrived, he arrived for a fight with the king Ahab. And Elijah the, Kish, the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as long as the God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain this year, but according to my war. No rain. No deal. That was fight. After there was no rain and no three years, he engaged the prophets of Baal in a fight. In 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 22. 1 Kings 18 22. We saw Elijah. Then Elijah said unto the people, I, even I only remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450. Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves. And cut it in pieces and lay it on wood. And put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on the wood and put no fire under. 
and call ye on the name of your gods and i will call on the name of the lord and the god that answered by fire let him be god and all the people answered and said it is well spoken that was fight by the time elijah finished and fell he practically executed them that was fight no wonder in verse 46 of the same chapter the hand of the lord could come upon him and he could run faster than the chariot of ahab by the hand of the lord you make the most of life and you experience speed in life if you will agree to possess the spirit of a fighter not a coward third example paul the apostle paul the apostle was a fighter we just read it i have finished my course i have fought the good fight second timothy chapter four and in verse six seven seven i have fought a good fight i have finished my course i have kept the faith paul was a fighter he was a warrior he was a soldier in second timothy chapter two and in verse two all the way to verse four hear what he said and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier be hardened be hardened be hardened as a soldier of jesus christ no man that wore it you are in a war no man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier he said be hardened be hardened if you want to make the most of life be hardened if you want to succeed in this life be hardened be hardened soldiers don't shed tears in battle they don't shed they don't cry in war you can't be hardened be hardened be hardened that was paul the apostle no wonder he's he, impact exceeded the impact of all the apostles put together put all the apostles together on one side and you put paul on the other side he weighs heavier look at the books he wrote the acts of the apostles the romans first corinthians second corinthians galatians ephesians philippians colossians thessalonians first and second first and second timothy titus Philemon, Hebrews, one man. Look at the race he ran by the spirit of a fighter, by the spirit of a soldier, by the spirit of a warrior. Something is happening to somebody today. Every demon of cowardice, every demon of timidity that has tied your life to the same spot and made you to be a perpetually crying baby. Today, that devil is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. That was Paul the Apostle. I'd like you to note a third thing. I said first, life is a battlefield, not a playground. And then, that it takes a fighting spirit to make the most of life thirdly even though all right before i go there just show you two things before we go do you except for the aircraft to take off from the ground it takes a fight the aircraft that flies at that incredible speed it must overcome the force of gravity on the i mean sorry it must overcome the friction of the ground and then takes off before it can fly go up and move its speed four forces are in place i've said that before an aeronautical engineer sat by me in the aircraft and i asked him and he was giving me the story of how what it makes takes for an aircraft to fly he said there are four forces in place there is a force called the the thrust that pushes it forward 
There is a force called the drag that tries to pull it backward. There is the force called the lift that takes it up. There is another force that is the weight or the gravity that pulls it down. He said before flight can happen, frost must overcome drag and lift must overcome weight. Then it happens. So there is a flight. It's an interplay of forces. Once a, a, some forces overcome certain forces, the aircraft will fly and remain in the air. In fact, where the aircraft reaches the altitude, uh, uh, another pilot was telling me, he said, in fact, you can bring the aircraft to a point where you, you engage the cruise control. And if you know that the weather is clear and everything, you can walk out even out of the cockpit. And then the aircraft is, you, you won't touch anything, it's just moving on for the next 300 miles or whatever fight you know that the eagle is a fighter i began to i studied the eagle and i realized that the eagle is a very fightful bird i'll tell you more about the eagle shortly if it moves for anything if it is a snake he's excited the mightier the better he will pick it wrap it around his leg and fly to his nest go there and pick out his eyes and pick out it and just finish it the eagle he can pick a lion baby lion or even middle level lion mountain goat is his specialist there is nothing the eagle cannot confront no wonder i hear that the, the eagle will fly what, I believe the golden eagle will fly at 125 miles an hour. That's faster than any fast car I know. An eagle will fly at, in fact, some of them will be up to 200 miles an hour. That's close to 300 and something kilometers an hour. Between 23,000 to 30,000 feet above sea level. A commentator said at that height some aircrafts can't reach. Don't reach. They don't fly there. No helicopter nears there. 25,000 to 30,000 feet above sea level. That is the eagle. And be able to locate his food 10,000 feet. 10,000 feet away. He can see food with clarity. That is the eagle. No wonder. It moves at such a speed. Beloved, if you don't want your life to be slowed down and dragged down, you need a fight. A fighting spirit. Now there are various fights that we are engaged in in life. And we must understand the fights in order to engage them very well. What are the various fights that we, you must bear in mind. Number one is the fight to maintain faith. The fight to maintain faith. To maintain conviction. The fight not to come to the point where you don't believe anything anymore. God is not working or whatever is not working. The devil is after your faith because in Faith is critical to your survival. The just shall live by his faith. Paul the apostle said, that was Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Paul the apostle said in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. There is a fight of faith. It is a confrontation of conviction. It is the fight to maintain your belief. Jude verse 3 said, Contend earnestly for the faith. Contend earnestly. When I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write to you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, which was what delivered to the saints. I believe it was Luke chapter 18 verse 7 or 8 where he said when the son of man cometh will he find faith on the earth i tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth 
So faith is going to become an endangered species. Faith is going to become a very, very rare commodity. There are those who may not, as we, as we conclude to the end of the age, they lost their faith, faith in God, faith in the Bible, faith in everything. So you need to fight. Yes, the word of God is true. What God says is true. What God says he will do, he will do. If it has not happened yet, doesn't mean it will not happen. It must happen. The fight to maintain faith. Number two, the fight against compromise or unrighteousness. They fight against compromise. In the last days, perilous times shall come. Second Timothy chapter 3 and in verse 1. Men shall be lovers of themselves, boasters and so on and so forth. It's a, a, they fight against compromise. The fight that Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego won in Daniel chapter 1 and in verse 8. And Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. The time comes where it looks like wrong is what is right. And then when you are doing the right thing, you look very abnormal. You look very eccentric. You look very out of your mind. And people are wondering whether you are still correct. Where compromise and conformity is the order of the day. It takes a fight to say no. Even if a hundred people are doing the wrong thing. I'm not running with them. Even if the whole city decides to do the wrong thing. I can't go along with them. Even if my whole family and my whole community decides on the wrong thing. I can't do it with them. It is the fight. Against compromise. Or unrighteousness. Number three is the fight to fulfill purpose and destiny. The fight to become everything God wants you to become. Uh, you don't arrive, you don't become what you are meant to be without a fight. The devil fears your destiny. He fears what you are meant to become. Because he knows that if you become what God wants you to be, it will cause damage and losses for his kingdom. So he fights. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. He said, there are many devices in the heart of a man. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. There are many things that the devil has in mind. He said, but the plan of the Lord must stand. The plan of the Lord must come to pass. What God has planned for you, planned for us, must come to pass. The fight. Paul the apostle said in Philippians chapter 3, Let's read from verse 12. He said, Not as though I had already attained. Either we are already perfect, but I follow after. I am pursuing, I am pressing, I am fighting. If that I may apprehend that, for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press towards that mark. I'm pressing for my call. I want to reach there. So it's a pressure. It's a fight. It's a fight. It's a fight. There is a pressure. There is a fight. Don't forget, the devil is afraid of what you are to become in God. Because you become you fulfill purpose at the expense of the kingdom of darkness. You cause them damage. The fight to fulfill purpose and destiny. Number four is the fight against the forces of evil. You know, to me, the, 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 the word devil means doer of evil. Doer of evil. Devil. The D is their doer. Against the forces of evil. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. We read it already. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle. That is we wrestle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we are wrestling against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness. 
in high places. You see, we live in a world of wickedness. You don't need to offend anybody to come across wicked people. Wicked agents and wicked devils. That person that uh, experienced a kidnap or experienced ritual, uh, uh, killers, uh, whatever. Not that he did anything wrong. But it's a world of evil. So, you must, be a, you must be, be aware of that. There are people whose assignment is to perpetrate satanic agenda. Their assignment is to do evil. That was what Peter was saying to Paul was saying to that by Jesus in Acts chapter 13 verse 10. Acts chapter 13 and in verse 10. He said, he said unto him, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, Thou enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Will you not cease? That's anything that is good, there are demons and people who are against it. Whatever, anywhere there is happiness, there are demons and agents of the darkness who want to puncture it. So that fight is there. The fight against the forces of evil who fight against everything that is right or good number and on of course in matthew chapter 16 verse 18 he said and i'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail so the gates of hell are trying to confront all the time number five is the fight against human bad will and negative expectations human bad will there are bad willers. They will and wish people evil. They look at you and just wish that you don't become anything. That was what he, what he, part of what he was referring to. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 5. Pulling down strongholds and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Pulling down, casting down imaginations and every heighten. Acts chapter 12 verse 11, when Peter was delivered, he said, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people, of the Jews. All the expectation. There are people who never greet other people until there is bad news with those people. Oh, I heard that you lost something. I just wanted to say sorry. He has never called him. Never will he call him for anything. Oh, I heard uh, that uh, the downsize in your place of work and uh, you lost your job. Sorry. That was not sorry. Oh. It is re we rejoice. So you need that. There are those who rejoice at the calamities and negative events of others. It is to them a joy. It's more like the spirit of witchcraft. It's a fight. And we win. That is the fight against human bad will, negative expectations of people. Number six is the fight against negative personal traits. That is, certain things in yourself that is a hindrance to your destiny. Some people, <laughs> incredible dimensions of laziness. Some people, amazing levels of progression. For the last 13 years, he has been thinking of doing something that hasn't been done. Lethargy, tiredness with nothing. In Romans chapter 13, verse 11, all the way, you are calling you can call that the enemy within, the enemies within, you know, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. You are slumbering too much, you are lazy too much, you are squandering time too much. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. 
the night is far spent the day is at hand let us cast therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting and eating too much chambering and wantonness and strife and envy bitterness too much no manner enemies within there are people what conquered them was in the devil it was in the witch it was themselves something within them a lifestyle something conquered them from within the reason why they haven't become what they were meant to become is from inside the fight against negative personal traits and you can ask god to show you and number seven the fight against negative emotions against negative emotions david said why are thou cast down oh my soul negative emotions depression fear anxiety feelings of low self-worth i am not like other people i cannot become like other people Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable of... Alright, go back to verse 1. Alright, go on. Next verse. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise. For the spirit of heaviness. Beloved, there are people who are too depressed to express destiny. Depression is the enemy of full expression. There are people who are too discouraged to have any advantage in life. You have to fight that. You have to fight that. That was where John the Baptist was until he lost his head. He was so discouraged, so depressed. Now when John had heard in, John, in, in Matthew chapter 12 and in verse 2, when John had heard in the prison the works of, of Christ, he sent to him, two disciples to him and said unto him, Are you he that should come or do we look for another? Hiya, John, who are you asking? Jesus the one you advertised to the world the one you said god told you anybody you see the the dove resting on that is the son of god you are now doubting him jesus answered and said unto him verse 4 go show john again the things which you do hear and see the blind receive their sight the lame walk the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who shall not be offended in me. That is John. You are getting offended. You are getting offended. Maybe John thought that Jesus should have come and set him free from the prison. And maybe to me, Jesus was waiting for John to manifest power. Because the Bible says John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah. Elijah couldn't be arrested. Elijah called fire on, the, on his arrestors. And he was looking at John. You carry the mantle, you carry the power of the same Elijah. What are you looking at? What are you waiting for? Was waiting for Jesus, probably to set him free from the prison. He said, are you the one? If you are the one, why am I still here? He said, blessed is he that is not offended. That was their last communication. Next thing we heard, they have sent for John's head. And taking it off. This depression brings destruction. It brings damnation. Mm. 
when you agree to be offended, you have made yourself an, a prey to be eliminated. God forbid. John was offended and he got eliminated. So it's a fight. Don't be playing with depression. It leads to madness. Don't be playing with discouragement. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Do so. So we have the fight to maintain faith. The fight against compromise. The fight to fulfill purpose and destiny. The fight against the forces of evil. The fight against human bad will and negative expectations. The fight against negative personal traits the enemies within the fight against negative emotion let me say this and then we'll see how we can begin to round off that was the point i was going to make last time and that's the next point to note even though we are involved in the in a fight we have been destined to win our destiny is victory before any fight arose. So don't be afraid. Don't walk about with I am fighting battle mentality. Walk about with a victory mentality. Even though we are involved in a fight, we have been destined to win. Any scripture, very, very quickly because of time. Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 32 to 35. For who is God? Save the Lord. And who is a rock? Save our God. God is my strength and power. And he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet. He setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. I'm not a victim. I am a victor waiting to happen. Psalm 18 verse 31 all the way to verse 34. We already read that. For who, for who is God? Save the Lord. Who is a rock? Save our God. It is God that guarded me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hands feet and setteth me upon my high places. Go on. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my hand. Psalm 60 verse 12. Psalm 60 verse 12. Psalm 60 verse 12. True God, we shall valiantly for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. Through God, we shall do valiantly. He helps us to beat down our enemies. Oh, yeah. Psalm 108, verse 13. Psalm 108, verse 13. Through God, we shall do valiantly. Repeated. For he it is that shall tread down our enemies. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Whatsoever is born of God, you have got little children and you have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Not that you will overcome them, you have overcome them. First John chapter 5 verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh, 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 overcometh. Present continues. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh, 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 present continuous, overcometh. You overcame, you are overcoming, you will overcome. That is, you won the battle before it arrived. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh. Even though we are involved in a fight, we have been destined to win. Quickly, what are the instruments of our battle instruments of victory i will divide it into two weapons of defense the things you use to protect yourself and weapons of offense weapons of defense we already saw that in ephesians chapter 6 
from verse 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. I'll read all the way to verse 18. The whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins get about with truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereto with all perseverance unto the saints. All perseverance and supplication for all saints. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. What weapons? Number one, truth. Truth. Now, we are talking of weapons of defense. Defense. There are things you need to cover yourself with. Not to end as a victim. Truth is a spiritual weapon. That was why the Bible said in Psalm 91 verse 4, Psalm 91 and in verse 4, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield. And thy buckler. Truth. 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 What is the meaning of that? Anybody who walks in lies is vulnerable to defeat. Lie. Lie. Falsehood. Falsification of things. Psalm 101 verse 7. He said, He that walketh deceit shall not dwell. He that walketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. He that walketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. The Bible said in John chapter 8 verse 44 speaking he said you are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. What is the meaning of that? Lie brings you into alignment with the devil so you become a cheap prey for destruction. Falsehood. Brings a person into alignment. So the first weapon you need to defend your life is truth. Number two, righteousness. John chapter 14 verse 21, Jesus said, The prince of this world cometh. Thirty. Hereafter I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and he can find nothing in me. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8 said, He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it and whoso breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1, he said the wicked flee when no man pursue, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Righteousness. 
Very important. Whatever breaks your hedge, breaks your defenses. Number three, witnessing. Short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Assignment for God is a, is a, is a weapon of defense. Your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Why? Luke chapter 10 verse 19. The 70 returned with joy. They returned with joy. They returned with joy. They returned with joy. And in verse 19 he told them, Behold I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you they came out from evangelism and he was giving them the charge truth righteousness witnessing number four faith Ephesians 6 16 above all taking the shield of faith where with you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Weapons of defense. Faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. The just shall live by faith. You need your faith to be alive. And next weapon, number 4, number 5, is salvation. The helmet of salvation. If you are not saved, your life is not safe. If you are not saved, we are not talking about even a fight. Psalm 18 verse 35. Psalm 18 verse 35. The Bible said, Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. And thy right hand has holding me up. And thy gentleness has made me great. The shield of thy salvation. Sal shield. It's a shield. It shields you. And 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 3, repeats that. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower, my refuge, my savior. That saved me from violence. So, embrace truth. Embrace righteousness. Embrace witnessing. Might just ensure that you are in touch and letting people know of what you know in God. Ensure that your faith is in place and of course salvation. The others I am going to mention are weapons of offense. What you need to pull down the devil. Number one is the weapon of fearless courage. Fearless courage. Courage, boldness. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Psalm 27 verse 1. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. Because I have been fearless, they stumbled and fell. They stumbled and fell. You can read all the way to verse 6. They stumbled and fell. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 30 said, The lion which is the strongest among the beast, it turns not away for any. Fearless, the weapon, fearless courage. Philippians chapter 1 verse 28, he said, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. Of salvation and that of God. In nothing terrified. Fearless. When, you see, Gideon took people to the, to the battlefield one day. He took 32,000 people to the battle. And God said, these people are too many for me to give them victory. Just announce, anybody who is fearful, let them return. 22,000 went back. 22,000, 2, 2. 
Ay, 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 ay. Because he knew that with fear the battle was lost. The battle was lost. Beloved, if you need this fighting spirit and to win the battles of life, you must ensure that fear is out of the question. Out of the question. The weapon of fearless courage. Number two is the sword of the spirit. And taking the sword of the spirit, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17, which is the word of God. That was the weapon Jesus used against the devil. It is written, Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, it is written, Matthew chapter 4 verse 7, it is written. Until you know what is written, you may easily be out of life. Until you know what is written. Every fresh revelation puts a new sword in your hands. Every fresh revelation almost equals fresh sword. Fresh fighting tool. Fresh fighting tool. The sword of the spirit. Revelation. Go for light. Any area, in any area where you are confronted, in that area, go for light. Go for insight. Go for revelation. And, and pull it out against the enemy in that area. The, the sword of the spirit. Number three is the weapon of faith. The weapon of faith. So here you are going to notice that faith is both a defense, a weapon of defense and offense. You use faith to protect yourself. You also use faith to attack the enemy. First John chapter 5 verse 4 said, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Your faith is a weapon of victory. Matthew chapter 9 verse 22, your faith has made you whole. So faith can bring you victory. Matthew 15, 28, your faith and she was whole and, and the daughter was made whole. Her daughter was made whole from that hour by faith. Faith makes whole. Faith brings victory. That is the weapon of faith. Number four is the weapon of authoritative declaration. The weapon of declaring boldly and loudly. Psalm 18, verse 43 to 45. 18, 43 to 45. Authoritative declaration. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people. Thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear from my mouth, the strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their close places. As soon as they hear of me. He said, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. In Isaiah chapter 44, from verse 26, he performs, confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messenger. David killed Goliath with his mouth before he threw the stone. He killed him with his mouth. Come and I will take off your head. You need to speak to that situation and speak to your life and your destiny i can't die before time i must fulfill my days i must fulfill my destiny the devil has, does not have the final say authoritative declaration to, your, to the hearing of yourself to the hearing of every devil that cares to hear that weapon is a tool i think it was luke chapter 21 verse 15 where he said, I will give you a mouth and I will give you a wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. So your mouth is not just for food. Mouth is a weapon which none of your adversaries can resist. I give you a mouth. I give you a wisdom. The weapon of authoritative declaration. Number five is the weapon of prayer, especially in the spirit. 
The weapon of prayer, especially in the spirit. He said, Ephesians 6, 16, praying always. He, he was outlining the weapons that we need to fight the devil. Many times we read that passage separate. It's, it's a continuation. And praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying in the spirit is a weapon of spiritual warfare. It's a weapon of spiritual warfare. Like we said, when you are confronted with situations you don't understand, you pray in the language you don't understand. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and verse 7. He said, Wherefore I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God that is in you, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, the weapon of prayer, especially praying in the spirit. Ordinary prayer, not even praying in tongues, delivered Jabez. In First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. Fighting at the place of prayer, delivered Jacob. He delivered Jacob. At the place of prayer, he delivered Jacob. In Genesis chapter 32 verse 24 to 28. Very, very important. The weapon of prayer, especially praying in the spirit. That was supposed to be number five. And then number five, number six is the weapon of joy and praise. Joy, praise. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10b. I will rejoice in the Lord. For, he, for the Lord shall guard my feet with strength. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18 and 19. And when your strength is not small. You win in the day of adversity. Proverbs chapter 28 and in 24 and in verse 10. When your strength is not small. You win in the day of adversity. Hallelujah. In the battle. Jericho, the battle of Jericho victory was won by the shout of praise Joshua chapter 6 verse 20 in the battle of Jehoshaphat victory was won as the people praised in 2nd Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 22 is God speaking to somebody here at all depression will only deprive you of victory uh, sadness, murmuring, grumbling only weakens your life. The weapon of joy and the weapon of praise. Beloved, there is so much to say, but round off like this. What is the profit of a fighting spirit? So, what have we said? You need fearless, the force of fearless courage, weapon of fearless courage, the sword of the spirit, you need the weapon of faith. You need the weapon of authoritative declaration. You need the weapon of prayer, especially in the spirit. You need the weapon of joy and praise. Let me add number seven. You call it the sense of urgency. The sense of urgency. David ran. You don't drag your feet in everything in life. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 22, where we read, and he ran. He left the carriage in the hand of the person who was carrying the carriage, and he ran. He ran. You need a, the sense of urgency. The sense of urgency. Also, verse 48, he ran towards Goliath. That sense of urgency, a baptism of the sense of urgency. You need that for a fighting spirit. You need alacrity, urgency. Finally, in conclusion, what is the profit of a fighting spirit? Psalm 89, verse 19 and 20. He said, I have, thou speakest in a vision to thy holy one and sayest, I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. I have laid help. That word help, that word might is the word fighter warrior now what 
is the prophet of a fighting spirit, number one, the help of God. The help of God. The help of God. You connect the help of God. Number two, the anointing of God. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil, have I anointed him. God helps fighters. He anoints fighters. Number three, the strength of God. Isaiah chapter 28 and in verse 6, Isaiah chapter 28 and in verse 6, he said, all right, read from verse 5. In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment and for strength to them that turn the battle to, to the gate. If you are a fighter, he says, I will impart you strength. Strength. The strength of God. No wonder they were asking Samson, what is the secret of your strength? He was such a fighter and his size could not account for his strength. Because the strength was supernatural. The strength of God. Number four is the possession of God-ordained inheritance. The possession of your God-ordained inheritance. If you are able to fight and you have the spirit of a fighter, the devil can deny you what is yours. Joshua chapter 14 verse 10 to 15. No time to read that. That is the story of Caleb when he made, went to make demands on his inheritance and he drove out the Anakims. Joshua chapter 10, 14 verse 10 to 15. The possession of your God ordained inheritance. Number five is the joy victory. People who lack a fighting spirit don't understand the joy of victory. Ay, 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 ay. Victory is too sweet. When you see the enemy beating black and blue, slapped upside the head, when he thought you couldn't reach there and you got there, the joy of it. Many allow discouragement to, to frustrate them from experiencing the joy of victory. No. Psalm 20 and in verse 5, he said, in your name, we will rejoice in thy salvation. That is in victory. In the name of our God, we will set up our banners. That is victory flag. We, we wave our flag in victory and rejoice in his deliverance. The joy of victory. It makes you fresh, makes you young. It makes you excited permanently. The joy of victory. Number six is supernatural speed. With a fighter spirit, speed is assured. All the things that are trying to block your access to what God has in mind for you are eliminated from the way with a fighter spirit. Elijah experienced speed. First Kings 18, 46. With a fighter spirit, access is assured. And finally, the crown of righteousness. If you fight to, to maintain, fight to stand against compromise, you fight to maintain the faith, you fight against the forces of darkness, there is the crown. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the, the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. There is the crown of righteousness. A crown awaits everyone who will take their stand and continue to believe in God. Take their stand against generational compromise. Take their stand and do the right thing. There is a crown waiting. Who will move on and reach out to others? Beloved, your crown. And right now, I take authority over the spirit of cowardice. I take authority over every defeat, defeatism spirit. I take authority over every force of hell that has tied down your life and your destiny. Today, it is over. Stand up on your feet, lift your hands, and appreciate him.